Hello, my name is John Yorkin, and I am with GE Analytical Instruments. We have recently introduced a concept of rethinking aspects of cleaning validation, and I wanted to share with you insights regarding the use of swabs with TOC analysis. In 1993, the FDA stated in their guidance documents that swabs should be utilized for direct sampling of the surfaces of the equipment that were just cleaned. This basically shows that the cleaning process that was designed is effectively removing residues or harmful cleaning agents. But for almost two decades, the industry has created more questions, ambiguity, and inquiries around this little item. When the industry thinks in terms of surface sampling, they tend to think about recovery testing associated with product-specific methods and carryover limits. However, this approach might lead some down a path of overlooking critical uses of the swabs in the other phases of cleaning like design, validation, and continued verification. Nevertheless, there's always opportunity to reduce risk with this sampling. There are so many opportunities for improvement, and I'm sure you are asking, where should we start? Why don't we start with the advantages and disadvantages of swabs used for direct surface sampling? TOC swabs have been designed with hydrophobic polyester tips for sampling the hard to clean surfaces of the production equipment. These swabs can also physically remove potential contaminants and contain a surfactant to aid in solubility if that becomes an issue. And when using swabs, one can control the amount of surface area that can be sampled. However, swabs can be a challenge when the technique becomes very dependent on the operator and accessibility of the equipment to be sampled. Most of the time, these areas are not accessible and swab sampling can be considered invasive or loading risk onto a system that was just cleaned. Swab sampling also presumes uniform coverage of the potential residues on the surface of the equipment. These advantages or disadvantages are typical for the validation and verification phases. But what about the design phase when using swabs for recovery testing? Have you ever thought about what the intended use of a TOC recovery test is when using swabs? Recovery tests are a measure of swab or rinse sampling efficiency. In other words, if there was 10 ppm of cleaning agents on a service and you swabbed and analyzed it, you may find you recovered only 5 ppm of the material. This would indicate that the sampling technique is only 50% efficient. Should this matter? What if you get 20 ppm for your sampling approach? Often people forget the true intent of recovery testing when this is the case. These recovery tests correlate the sampling method to the surface material of the equipment and the unique characteristics of the potential residues. That said, here are some key points for designing a swab recovery test for TOC that will minimize variability and increase the likelihood of success. When preparing for this type of test, it is important to consider what is called interference or enhancement. These elements are anything that will impact TOC recovery positively or negatively. For example, you need to ensure equipment, coupons, glassware, pipettes, and sample containers are scrupulously clean. And you must be aware of the enhancement or interference from the types of water used, the environment, organic solvents, or the use or non-use of gloves. Swab recovery studies should be simple. When you think about it, the process is pretty straightforward. For instance, one could make up a stock solution of the compound of interest and spike the surface of a coupon that reflects the equipment in the production process. After the spike dries, swabbing should occur according to what is prescribed in standard operating procedures. The swab is then placed in a vial, water added, and the vial is then capped and staged for TOC analysis. That's a pretty simple test, right? Most would agree, but there are a few additional factors that could impact the simple testing. When working with TOC, it's important that the stock solutions account for the amount of carbon to make up the compound of interest. This is considered percent carbon of the compound and can affect spiking and the interpretation of results. Not taking into account the percent carbon of a compound is often misinterpreted as poor solubility, which could lead you down the wrong path. Spiking is also another technique that could impact results or create misunderstandings. Spiking the surface of a coupon should be uniform across the testing area and should be a concentration that is at or around the acceptance criteria established. However, spiking volumes need to account for the amount of water that is used in the TOC vial. If you are adjusting volumes in this vial, you can basically adjust enhancement or dilution in the TOC results, which could impact your study. Swabbing techniques can vary from company to company. However, the most common method is to utilize one wet swab and one dry swab in a pattern of overlapping strokes with a good amount of pressure. The swabs have been designed to withstand a lot of force to ensure good technique, coverage, and absorbance. 
However, the techniques utilized in the lab for these tests must be transferred to the other phases of the cleaning validation program. Our time together focused on swabs and recovery testing for TOC. We also shared the potential best practices that would mitigate interference or enhancement. That said, if your recovery tests are still presenting a lot of questions, think differently about your approach. Your swab recovery testing may require the use of acid in the vial to prevent compounds from sticking or reviewing the precision of the TOC data to ensure reproducibility. What's important to remember is that with swab recovery testing, there is no acceptable or unacceptable recoveries in CGMPs. You develop your own standards on what is acceptable or not. You should be confident in proving these standards are practical, achievable, and scientifically justifiable. The key to recovery is consistency and not just total recovery. Unfortunately, the industry for some reason unconsciously penalizes themselves for the amount of the compound or the amount of TOC that is not recovered.